Hello everybody, welcome to another Eternal Deck Tech. This week I have a Haru Spellcraft deck for you. So I've been really interested in a lot of the new Spellcraft weapons, particularly Vanquisher's Blade, because this card hates a lot of things. It kills Mokdo's dead, gets rid of a lot of the revenge shenanigans that even I was doing fairly recently. And it's also just, uh, like, 2-2 two, two for 2 plus Vanquish is so good. Like, this card's just fantastic. And I got kind of destroyed by a deck that was similar to this, particularly by a card that I hadn't been thinking about, which was Linebreaker's Shield. So, this being 5, give plus 2, plus 2, and then stun a unit, it's actually really, really useful. Uh, I've... Basically, what the point of this deck is, let's just go into the full overview, is for you to get down some early aggression, things like Crown Watch Paladin or Cawthon, uh, Geneve Merchant or Castle Battle Mage, and then just jam a bunch of weapons on it and keep up a bunch of tempo. So just stop your opponent from ever really being able to block. So how do we do that? Well, there's a bunch of different ways. First of all, we're going to be playing, obviously, cheap, aggressive creatures, also important that protect themselves a little bit if we can. So we've got a lot of Aegis. We've got Crown Watch Paladin, we've got Geneve Merchant, uh, we've got Soul Battle Mage, and Shelter Wing Rider, and Svetcha and Jotun Feast Caller. I consider this as essentially having Aegis because it does stop your opponent from being able to play spells or weapons until your next turn. And a lot of the times that's kind of better than Aegis. It's been really, really, really solid for me. I've always liked this card ever since it came out. It's disgusting to play against a lot of the time. So many times you just, like, overreach into a board because you know that you have one or two Svechas and you can just end the game before they can ever harsh rule you. Um, so that's a pretty good look at, like, we've got a bunch of protection and a bunch of aggressive creatures. They're all fairly aggressively costed. Genev Merchant, probably the one that's the least so, but... Still three power for three, and you have the ability of Aegis, and of course being able to get things from your market is not bad at all. Then we ha the big thing that we have here is the attachments. So we've got those Linebreaker shields like I talked about, where you can just stun a unit, draw a card, gain two armor by paying five, and you give plus two, plus two. So kind of think of it in a way as a little bit like Minotaur Duelist, which is the three, two revenge creature when it comes into play you stun an enemy unit this one's almost a little bit better than that because you can put it onto another unit which means that it's essentially got charged the two damage uh, so it's a little bit less than a three two but plus two plus two it's close and then of course endurance is really nice so it'll allow you to swing to block on the back swing so if you happen to be in a race situation with like you put it on a flyer say like shelter wing rider you can still block with your flyer afterwards and you draw cards and gain a little bit of life. So it does a bunch of different things here. It's all very minimal, but all those little things kind of add up to a lot. Uh, same thing with Vanquisher's Blade. Vanquisher's Blade kind of has those corner cases that aren't actually that much of a corner case of preventing your opponent from having spells leave the void, and, like any cards leave the void, in fact. They can't do things like Dark Return. They can't use Revenges. Um, it's really, really useful that way. Like I said, just kills Mokdo dead. And then you can also just use it as a vanquish to get rid of something really big and nasty. As you might have noticed, there's a lot of really big time cards running around. So it's not a bad idea to be packing some vanquishes. So we have those. I also have one that I didn't mention before, which is Change Stick. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. It's got two E's, but Change Stick, uh, ha gives flying and allows you to polymorph. Again, doesn't seem like a lot, but this card is insane. I mean, the Elder's Feather used to be something that was like on that edge of being pretty good, and this card's just so much better. I mean, it's a little bit more expensive, I mean, one more, but it also gives a little bit of toughness, and it still gives the flying, which is huge, and then being able to spellcraft polymorph is fantastic. So there's so many times that like they might have like a Sandstorm Titan you're having trouble with, and boop, turn it into a frog, off you go. All of your flyers are set free and you can just get in there. It's really, really nice on Soul Battle Mages and Geneve Merchants, the ones that are kind of grounded in the meantime, or Jotun Feast Caller it's fantastic on. Uh, we also then have Permafrost as another way to just kind of keep your opponent from being able to get back into the game. So you want to just, like, lead with the Crown Watch Paladin, then immediately put, like, a Vanquisher's Blade on it or follow it up with, like, a Merchant or Battle Mage, and then start Permafrost, Linebreakers, 
just stop them from ever being able to block. You have some strategizes to smooth the draws, and you'll notice that a lot of our cards have double costs. So we have like double justice for Casal Battle Mage, double justice for Valkyrie Enforcer, double, uh, um, double Primal and double justice for Shelter Wing. So you really, really need to have a bunch of different colors, you know, the triple primal for Jotun. And with that, we've got a couple of Seek Powers and a fair bit of power in the deck. Seems weird, because our curve's kind of low, but we've also got all of these Spellcraft weapons, so it's not as low as you'd think. We also have things like Genev Merchants, so we can throw away extra sigils and get at things out of our market. Speaking of, we should probably go over that. We have another Change Stick in the market, because it's an easy card for us to get, it's the best equipment I think that we can put in there with the Genev Merchant. Possibly we want to put Linebreaker Shield. I just feel like the flying is often a little bit more relevant. Could be wrong. I might want to change that up. Uh, I like having a banner in there if possible because there's always those games where you're just kind of stuck. You need to land a Feast Caller or a Svetcha and if you just had one more power you'd be able to do it. So it'll get you there. Uh, permafrost as another removal spell, obviously just kind of great. Big game here is Crystallize, stunning each unit and dealing one damage to them. So if your opponent doesn't have any endurance, this card just kind of wins you the game immediately. If you have any board presence at all, it's just disgusting. But it's like a really, really narrow card, so it's a perfect market one for our intents and purposes. Last thing, we have another Feast Caller. I'm not sure if I want this in there or not. It's a really high impact card if you can get it to start attacking, which is a little bit tough right now with a lot of big time units. Hopefully once you're at five, you might have some Vanquisher's Blades or Linebreaker Shields or something to stun them or remove them, permafrost them out of the way. But I, I might change that up. Another card that I've actually seen and played with out of the market has been Scourge of Frost Home, which is just a 10 cost 8-8 that stops your opponent from playing any spells. And it's Probably a little expensive for this deck, but it's just one of those cards that in a corner case where you go into a really long grindy game, any game that's like that, like for example, there's right now Justice, Primal, and Shadow as a control deck that's running around and it plays almost no units, and you can just jam an, a Scourge of Frost home and they just can't beat it. Like there's almost no card in their deck that wins against that. So if you can get to that point, you can just end the game immediately. And generally, those decks will grind you long enough that you can get up to a really high power count, even in a deck like this. So that's our deck. I've been liking it quite a bit. It's been doing fairly well for me, and we're going to run it through some games, see what happens.